the jewel of Midtown St. Louis, St. Louis University, and it's Billigan basketball of Valley Sports Midwest. Tonight, the Bills are back home at Shea Fitz Arena. More non-conference play as they get set to host the Broncos of Boise State. Happy holidays, one all from all of us here at Valley Sports Midwest. Well, with Scott Heimark, Scott Warman, great to have you alongside. And Scotty, this past week, tough day at the office for the Billikens against Rick Patino's club and Travis Sports squad trying to right the ship here back at home. Yeah, it's an opportunity to bounce back Tuesday night. No question about it. it was a tough night, but you got three in a row here at home. You got to take care of business. There's a very talented Boise State Bronco team coming to shape it tonight. All right, Gibson Jimerson led the team despite the loss on Tuesday night against Iona, and he has been a sharp shooter, to say the least, from the the arc this season. I simply think he's one of the best shooters in America. At six and five, he has an incredibly quick release and trigger. He doesn't need a lot of time and space to get his shot off, Scott. He leads the ability is scoring at over 14 a game, shooting 42% from beyond the arc. But it's his movement off the ball that he's really improved. He's finding other ways to score, and he draws a lot of attention from Boise State here tonight. There you see, 18 point shy of 1,000 of his incredible career here at St. Louis University. All right, so Boise State comes to town, and here is a club that is a lockdown defense team that the Bills are going to face tonight. Yeah, they're experienced. They made the tournament last year. They returned a lot of those players, but it all starts on the defensive end. They do an incredible job guarding as a team. One of the best teams in the country, as you can see, in scoring defense, only giving up 58 points per game. Teams are only shooting 38% against them. They are connected, they are physical, and a very experienced group. They're going to have their hands full, slowing down this Billiken team who averages almost 80 a game. Last year, these two schools met for the very first time in Boise, and the Bills came out on top in overtime. It's the Billikens, it's the Broncos. Starting lineup and opening tip, heading your way next. Yep, this is Scott. One, two, three, four, five. All right. Here at Chaffetz Arena, second all-time meeting between these two teams here tonight in the Gateway City. All right, let's take a look at the starting lineups in tonight's matchup. It's brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. And there's Travis Ford and his starting five. And Scotty, you mentioned Gibson, obviously, from uh, the outside. And how about the addition of Javon Pickett to the squad? Well, Pickett's been terrific. The Mizzou transfer, fifth-year senior, kind of does everything. One of the better rebounders in the A-10. And Travis Ford really trusts him here early. There you see head coach Leon Rice and his Boise State Broncos and his starting five. Marcus Shaver, now he's the leading scorer, rebounder, and Mr. Everything. He did not play in their victory against Eastern Oregon on Tuesday, but he's healthy and back in the lineup here tonight. Yeah, he's another super senior, has 1,700 career points, so he can really get it done for Leon Rice. Leon Rice's 13th year at Boise State, very well respected in the industry, and his teams are always disciplined, take care of the basketball, and they really get after you. Most people think Boise State, blue turf, football, right? But this is a very good basketball team that comes to the Gateway City. They do have the cool blue turf, but their basketball is underrated nationally. First time in school history that they won a Mount West Conference regular season and tourney title in their first jumper off the mark as Devontae Perkins picks up the miss for the Billikens. The Billikens on the offensive end. Scotty, they want to share it, they want to shoot it, they want to space the ball, reverse it, get downhill. An uncharacteristic offensive night for the Bills against Rick Pitino's squad. Yuri in and out. Shooting low percentage beyond the arc, even field goals, and a lot of blocks as well. Yeah, they've got to take care of the basketball, and that's one of the things Travis Ford and his staff really wants to make sure they come out with the energy here early. They thought that Iona really came and punched him in the mouth, and they didn't have a great reaction. Rice from three. Dagenhart, who is the reigning freshman of the year in the Mountain West Conference, picks up the rebound, and the foul is called. Travis Ford definitely got their attention the last couple of days in practice after that Iona game. You know, that was a tough game. You knew Iona was going to be prepared, got a very experienced team. You got Rick Pitino. But to get beat the way they got beat is what bothered both the players and the coaches. So I would expect them to come out and play with a lot of intensity here early. Broncos with 90 points on the board in their victory this past week. That was the most they've had this season. Shaver on the drive. Portal 
pulls down the rebound for the Bills. Gibson. Inside, outside action. Shaver off the mark as Broncos start out cold. This is actually the first true road game for Boise State this season. Perkins on the drive short. Last touch by the Bills. Boise State basketball. Yeah, Boise State played in the Myrtle Beach Invitational, one of those MTE tournaments, but they haven't played in a true road environment. So Coach Leon Rice was really interested to see the reaction of this team. He's got a lot of veterans, so you would expect them to come out and play with a lot of composure and poise. Coach the, Rice in his, I'm sorry, his 13th season, already the all-time wins leader in Broncos history. Yeah, how about 20 wins in nine seasons there in Boise State as we have a travel. Both teams a little jittery here early. Yeah, the Broncos 0 for 6 from the field. Had a big win against Texas A&M just about a week ago as they have three of their seven wins against Power 5 clubs. Yeah, you mentioned the A&M game. They beat Washington State. They beat Colorado. They beat a good Loyola team as Yuri Collins travels. And that's one thing that Boise State's going to do. They're going to really rotate over. That help side defense is going to be there when Yuri Collins beats his man. That's one thing that Boise State is going to do. They're going to rotate over. And, and what you're seeing a little bit, Scott, is you're going to make, make, teams are making Yuri Collins become a scorer because they know how effective he is at finding his teammates. They're going to make him finish. And now 0 for 7 for Boise State to start off in the first two and a half minutes. Imagine with this stifling defense, if you're the Billikens offense, you probably have to show a little bit of patience too, don't you, Scotty? Yeah, you don't want to force one early in the possession. You want to make them work, but if you get an open look for one of your shooters, you go ahead and take it. Jimerson. And that's that mid-range game that he's got to continue to develop. Everybody knows how effective he can be from three. He's gotten better at getting to the line, but it's that to become a three-level scorer and be a guy that can really truly get 20 a night, he's got to continue to work on that mid-range. Teams are combined 0 for 11 right now yeah. to start this one off here at Shavitz. Really frigid here in early December. <laughs> yes, just a bit. Good steal by Gibson. on the drive, partially blocked by Smith. Here comes Max Rice and the Boise State Broncos in transition. Rice, the son of the head coach, Leon Rice, one of the top scorers on this Broncos team. Smith on a four. His ball picked up by St. Louis. on the drive, gets the bump, won't drop. Nobody can get anything to get go down. Good double there. They're going to double Dagan Hart down on the post. They're not going to let him play one-on-one. -on -one. Wide open look, and the three is made by Smith. Sixth time is the charm from beyond the arc for Boise State in the opening four minutes. It's not that they're not getting great looks either. Both teams are getting decent looks. Jump down. And Francis lost his footing. And we got a timeout on the floor. Just underway. Billiken basketball on Valley Sports Midwest. Assists and assists per game and he was at the MAC just a few blocks down the street from us on Wednesday and uh, getting quite the honor as he was pre presented with the Carl Bauer Award recognized for the top amateur sports player in the St. Louis area. I know he tweeted out he was 
almost in awe of the Dick Vermeils and the yeah. Ozzy Smiths. And uh, several different Billikens uh, have received this award. In fact, I think maybe you got this too, right? <laughs> but long, you said you forgot about it. A long time ago. But that, that is a tremendous honor and a tremendous event. And really cool that the MAC honored Yuri as the, the top amateur athlete in St. Louis and certainly deserving of that. Oh, very much so. So much fun to watch. Dagenhart posting up. That's the matchup everybody was concerned with because he's got such great size at six foot eight, 240 pounds, a little bit too big for Pickett. They might throw thatch at him. They might even have to put a coral on him. Coral trying to find some space. Billiken still can't buy a bucket five and a half into this one. Stolen. Going right to the rack, too strong. And they're going to call an offensive foul on a coral. Yeah, coral just a little out of control. You can tell he's frustrated. Travis Ford's trying to get him to get untracked a little bit on the offensive end. He's, he's doing his job on the on the on the glass, averaging nine rebounds a game. But offensively, he just hasn't had the touch around the basket. See a little frustration that time. Sean Hall, Tony Crisp, and Trey Steins are officials for tonight's matchup. Rice slides out. Rebound taken. Bravo. That's a good rebounding team, too. Billikens. You know, lead the A-10 in rebounding margin at plus seven, but the Broncos are, are plus five in the rebounding category. Very in traffic. Now the student yeah. section can sit down. <laughs> I hope they stand, they keep standing, but it's been a I while. I think they are now, yeah, looking over there. It's a bit of a drought, but when you go to a drought, you know who to go to. Yuri Collins either can make a play for himself or for somebody else. Megan Hart off the fingertips and a turnover by Boise State. That's what Yuri does so well. He, he really kind of snakes off of that ball screen. You can't make him to play faster than he wants to. It just kind of gets to his spot, patient. Gotten better at being a threat offensively because teams are starting to make him score because of his incredible court vision. We talk about Boise State's defense, but that's already the fifth turnover forced by the Billikens defense here, Scott. Yeah, and that's what Travis Ford wants to hang his hat on. He's like, you know, listen, we're going to shoot the ball well some nights, some nights we're not, but we can always get down and guard, and that's the, really the identity that he wants for this program. The problem is when you turn it over, then you go to the other end, and you got a mismatch like Dagenhart who travels fortunate for the Billikens, but again, you can see that matchup. Boise State's going to keep going to Tyson Dagenhart. Collins on the baseline. Billikens will trigger underneath. Well, you can see teams now, they're just face guarding Jimerson, too. They are just taking him out of the game. They're not helping off of Jimerson, so he's not going to get a lot of open looks. He's got to continue to move without the basketball. Still got to find a way to be effective. Gibson mid-range jumper drops in. That's it. That's exactly what you got to do. You got to use that aggression on the defensive end against them. Put the ball on the floor. Those mid-range shots will open up the ones from yep. beyond the arc. Yep, and then that creates spacing for all your teammates. Mm -hmm. Looks like Eddie Thatch is going to pick up the foul. Yeah, watch Jimerson just face up on Rice and just go right by him and pop up. Beautiful, tough shot, but you'll take that shot all day long. And now they've got to play him a little more honest, so you're not going to close out quite as quickly because he might put it on the floor. Gibson got that first step on him to open up that yep. shot. Touched by Forrester. Take, of course, the Temple transfer. And there you see Coach Ford. Seventh year here in 
Midtown St. Louis. Whiting, who just checked in. Dagenhout from deep. And the foul looks like it's going to be on Jake Forrester. been content with playing essentially four guards and either a Coro or a Forrester most of the year. Milner inside. What a block by Hargrove. <laughs> now can defense turn into offense for the Bills? Yuri. Nice touch by Milner. And we got a timeout on the floor. 11.46 remaining in our opening half. Terrence Hargrove with a huge block. Bills trail it by three. Neighbors Credit Union is teaming up with Billikens Basketball to boost the building blocks of home ownership in the St. Louis community. For every Billiken block shot, Neighbors Credit Union will make a $20 donation to Mission St. Louis. For more information, visit Neighbors Credit Union or Billiken Basketball online. And a huge block for Mr. Hardgrove right before the break there, Scott. That was beautiful and without fouling, and that's what he brings energy off the bench. Played about 10, 12 minutes a game. When he comes in, he can knock down threes. He can finish in transition and certainly guard on the other end. So, Travis Ford looking for that combination to get this offense untracked. Here Ooh, man, they're gonna say it was last touch by Forrester. Yeah, they're a little hot. I like the I like the idea coming out of the timeout by Travis Ford, a little two-man game with Yuri and, and Jake Forrester, but just a little hot on that pass by Yuri. Scott, you talked about just in the last offensive possession for these Boise State Broncos, they're rebounding. They have six offensive boards already, but only two points to show for it. That's too many by Travis Ford standards, but they haven't been able to quite execute. Ndonga. Great job by Forrester to get terrific position and the foul on Milner. And it was a great job by Fred Thatch on the defensive post. A little out man that time. And that's what they've got to do. And that's what Thatch brings to the to the table as well. It's doing some energy, brings defense, can guard four spots. Now you bring a Coro in, but they've got to find a way to get to the free throw line. When you're really struggling offensively, you got to find a way to get to the line, see the ball go in to find some rhythm. Good save by Thatch. They're going to get downhill, stop playing east-west, and get downhill to play north-south. Collins will head to the free throw line, just what you talked about, Scott, right there. And sometimes you just got to get the ball to your best player and get downhill and just will yourself to the free throw line. Again, Boise State, you can tell why they only give up 58 points a game. I mean, they help, they're physical, they bump cutters. But if Yuri Collins can find a way to get in the teeth of the defense, that could open things up for others. Special night. What was that? A week and a half ago with the 20 assisted, only one turnover. I mean, it's not like you see that every night oh in college goodness. basketball. Sky, it was Unbelievable, just man. Just beautiful basketball. I mean, just made simple plays, made magnificent plays. And like you said, the one turnover. That's incredible. It's unbelievable. We're all battling for the offensive board. And they're going to get Milner for his second foul. Two quick fouls on the big man for Boise State. From Olathe, Kansas, shot blocking machine. In fact, six in the Mountain West in blocks per game. He had four earlier this year. Gibson, that one slides out. That's the best look he's had so far tonight. Whiting got a step on Yuri. And that'll be goaltending. Whiting really known as a shooter, and this time Yuri just anticipates the ball screen. Whiting does a nice job getting the ball up, and right call as Okoro takes it off the glass. Whiting got his first career start with the absence of Shaver on Tuesday night in their victory against 
Eastern Oregon. Gary trying to get a pick. Oh man, Whiting read that beautifully. Yuri tried to slide that to Okoro. Quick hands by the freshman. So that's where Yuri sometimes is, is too unselfish. You know, you're right there at the rim, and sometimes you should just finish. Dagenhard spots up for a three. And the offensive rebound, seventh of the night for the Broncos. Ganga. Misses everything. Good job, job by Okoro, not giving up any ground. Collins again. No. Okoro with the offensive glass. Hargrove. Yes! <laughs> Maybe that'll get the Bills' offense rolling. Yep. Terrence doing on the defense and offensive end right now. That's exactly right. Offensive rebound leads to a three. Mr. Energy doing everything. Terrence Hargrove giving him a spark. Yuri will head to the line. Well, watch the effort by Okoro. Just to get the ball. Sometimes the best offense is off of a missed shot and an offensive rebound. Sometimes that's when you get open threes. And Argo's been really good. I mean, he's been the best Billiken. And like you said, maybe that'll give him a little bit of energy. As, as poorly as the Billikens have played offensively and with really no rhythm, they have an opportunity to go up here with 8.55 to go in the first half. And you can see a lot of big men who wind up getting that offensive rebound trying to get a stick back. <laughs> I mean, that's great court awareness to see what it his is. teammate wide open for a triple. It, it, I always say it feels like it's your right of passage if you get offensive rebound that you get to shoot it. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, uh, I worked this hard, I'm probably going to shoot it. And of course, the presence of mind to find a teammate. <laughs> so with the free throw make, the Billikens with their first lead of the night. Okay, so Yuri's going to take a break. So this is always interesting to watch how they run the point. Do they find any rhythm on the offensive end with Yuri out of the game? Look at Thatch. I mean, he is all over Shaver. Now they're going to switch. Shaver stops, pops, and hits. Woo. Yeah, he's really good. He's really good. You can see why he scored 1,700 points in college. Averaging 7.6 rebounds, and he's only 6-2. Thatch. There is Francis again on the offensive glass. Keeping it simple. Go to the glass, go straight up. Nice. Ooh, off the glass. Mm-mm-mm. Oh. Pelicans did everything right, and Rice just banked one in, and sometimes you just tip your cap and go to the other end. Long from Parker. Yes! Parker hits the three. Pelicans up by two. Oh, and that's what they need, another energy source. Sincere Parker, the... Junior College All-American from Mobley, another person that Travis Ford can go to off the bench to give him a spark and love to see that ball go down. Only a second three of the season. Oh, Ooh. with the answer from Abba. Five points for the transfer from Texas Tech. Five. Thatch. Oh, tipped away, stolen. Rice in transition. Three, 
Max from downtown. Billiken basketball when we come back. Billikens getting some production from the bench. Sincere Parker with the triple. Bills down by one. One tie, Billikens and Broncos here at Chaffetz Arena. Hey, Billiken fans. Now is a great time to get your furnace checked by AAA Home Service. If you need a new system by American Standard, contact our friends at AAA Home Services or visit AAASTL.com. Parker hitting at three. We've seen the Billikens hitting some from a long distance here in the last three or four minutes, Scotty, and trying to open things up. I thought Okoro has been huge yep. for this team, especially from an offensive standpoint, getting those rebounds. Yeah, he's done a nice job on the offensive glass, and that's opened some things up. Nice to see Sincere Parker knock one down. He's only, he was, before that shot, he was one for 16 from the three-point line, and this guy came in as a prolific right. junior college All-American scorer. We know he can shoot. If he can get some momentum, some rhythm, and some sustained minutes, he's a, another valuable weapon for Travis Ford. like Pickett's going to get called for the offensive foul. That's too bad because that was Parker had a nice look there. Coro's going to go out of the game, Forrester back in, but Bill could get some good minutes off the bench from Terrence Hardgrove, Sincere Parker, Travis Ford trying to find that right combination. Three. Billikens doing a nice job hedging out and helping for some tough shots. That one was forced there by Abo. Fury has yet to get an assist here tonight in the first half. Crazy. There you go. There's Pickett high off the glass. Billikens started out 0 for 7 from the field. Now they're Six for their last ten. And moving screen. We'll go back the other way. Jimerson checking back in for Coach Ford. And you can see why this Boise State team has held up their last four opponents under 60 points. I mean, they really get after it on the defensive end. They challenge everything that they can test. Beautiful pass and finish by Gibson Jimerson. There's the assist you were looking for. <laughs> exactly. If you move without the basketball when Yuri has it, he will find you. The magician. Literally. Even Javon Pickett said that. He said, I've had to learn that because I, I, I used to stand and just watch him, but I've learned that if you just move in space, he'll find you. Pickett trying to get some help. Forrester on Dagenhart. Great job by the Billikens. Get back on defense. Pick it in transition. And the finish by Hargrove. Defense creating offense. Yep, and that's what you got to do when you're struggling a little bit is get downhill, let your defense take control, and go the other way. Pick it again, pushing the pace. You know what, though? I like that. I like that downhill movement by Javon Pickett. Getting a defensive rebound, pushing tempo. That's one of the things the Billiken coaches. You do not want to get in a half court grind session with Boise State. Pickett picks up the foul. Billikens with some tough defense. Getting the steal and getting the bucket on the other end. And 
Terrence as they take on Boise State tonight. Terrence Hargrove, part of the Billikens bench. Eight points coming off their bench so far, Scott Highmark. Five of those from Hargrove, and also he's been a force on the boards as well as defensively. Yeah, he hasn't come off the floor. Travis Ford has seen the energy that he's brought to this team on both ends, on the defensive glass, getting out in transition, finishing. You mentioned the big uh, block shot and knocking down shots. And, and again, when you've got depth and experience like Travis Ford has, you can bring a guy like Chance Hargrove in, and if, and if he's playing the hot hand, he's going to leave him in. Good challenge by Forster on the defensive end. Yeah, that's the benefit of bringing a guy like Jake Forster, another super senior, the Temple transfer, a lot of experience, has great hands, good vision on this end. Bring something different than Okoro. Here he finds a wide open shot and it won't roll in. You know, we talk about Boise State, we did at the top of the show of their defense, but I think the Billikens need a lot of credit for what they've done yeah. offensively so far tonight. Yeah, they've been excellent. They've been physical. They've been contesting everything. A little late whistle that time on Forrester. He's not going to like that, but you're exactly right, Scott. I mean, the whole Boise State to 16 points. They have done a tremendous job, particularly finding Marcus Shaver and Dagenhart. Their two stars have really been limited. Siller to the line. <laughs> Folks, the Billiken Club is the annual charitable giving program that benefits the Department of Athletics at St. Louis University. For information on how you can become part of the Billiken Club, contact them at 314-977-8180 or by email at billikenclub at slu.edu. So for the first time, we're going to see uh, at least some pressure picked up full court by Boise State. Yeah, I think you're starting to see teams do this. Not so much to turn Yuri Collins over, because you're probably not going to do that, but just to wear him out, because he's playing so many minutes. Bats and Forrester not on the same page. Boy, Yuri with some quick hands, but Silla gets the slam. Travis Ford not going to be happy with either end. Turning the ball over, unforced turnover, as you called it exactly right on one end, and then not running back on the defensive end and defensive transition. Those are two of the critical mistakes that Travis Ford tries to eliminate. Travis takes his first half timeout as the Bills are up by one. And the Billikens, you know, the net rankings came out this week, and you and I were both talking before the game. A little surprised at where St. Louis was as far as the net rankings are concerned, especially when you consider yep. this monster of a non-conference schedule yep. that Travis put together this season. Yeah, there's a little discrepancy between the Ken Palm and the net rankings yep. as, they, as they first came out. You know, the, the losses are to Maryland and Auburn are top 20 teams in America at Iona. I think Iona is going to be an NCAA tournament team. And you've got some quality wins. Memphis is playing great. You've got Providence. You've got Southern Illinois. You still have the opportunity tonight. And then you got Drake for the Missouri Valley Conference coming next week. So you've got an opportunity to increase your your net ranking as you go into the conference season but unfortunately for the Billikens they, they have the highest ranking of all the teams in the A-10 so teams like Dayton and others uh, Richmond Davidson that they thought were going to be potential at large bids haven't played as well in the non-conference season yet actually Memphis beat Auburn today they did beat them Forrester inside, good, strong move right inside in the paint. Yep. And that's what I was talking about. He brings something different, a little jump hook. He's got a feathery touch, different than Okoro, maybe not as good on the offensive glass, but brings some offensive output. Abo is going to get called for the push off on the <laughs> offensive end. <laughs> I'm laughing. Leon Rice is like, how about Fred Thatch? <laughs> he's, like, he's mugging my guy. I love it. Fred Thatch is always in the right position, so strong. If you love defense, he's a guy oh you always goodness. have to watch. I love watching. Every time I watch Fred Thatch, I'm like, I'm so glad he didn't have to guard me when I played college. 
I never would have scored, <laughs> ever. Oh, come on now, give yourself no. some credit. <laughs> nope, I don't even think he'd let me touch it. Dickens. Ooh, what a pass and the finish by Thatch. How did Javon even see him? All right, we had the same angle he did, and we didn't see it. That's called threading the needle. And now Boise State will call a timeout. 129 remaining in our opening half of Billiken basketball on Valley Sports Midwest. Bills up by five after this two inside. Yeah, watch the patience, the movement by Thatch, and pick it with the nice delivery. That's what you get when you get a fifth-year guy passing it to a fourth-year guy. That's the, the interesting thing about this Billiken roster. They have five players in graduate school. And their top seven players, Scott, are in the fourth or fifth year of college basketball. It's such an advantage. And I was watching college basketball today, whether it's Alabama and Houston or Mizzou and Kansas. Every team in college basketball that's good is old. They're old. They've right. got that experience. They are. And it's everywhere. It is. They certainly are. He's down at the Cayman Islands uh, broadcasting the tournament. And uh, Steve Alford's Nevada Reno Wolfpack were obviously in the same conference yep. as Boise State. Watch their practice on Sunday. And Scott, for a whole hour, half of that practice that Alford had with his team was defense. I had never seen that all the years we've been doing college basketball. I've never seen a practice that was 30 of the 60 minutes all defense. It was unbelievable. Especially from Steve Alford. Right. <laughs> Just they shooting three. Yeah, time, exactly. Right? <laughs> Shot clock winding down. Smith on Forrester. Great defense by Jake. That was a tough shot. And the foul is called. Billikens have 17 fouls, and that is the seventh on Boise State. Five points here tonight, three of them from the charity strike. And here he's now four for five from the free throw line. Now we talked about the Bulldogs were struggling early about the ability to get downhill, get to the free throw line. They've certainly done that much better here in the last 10 minutes of the first half. Travis Ford has put nine Billikens on the floor in the opening 20 minutes. Eight have scored at least two points. Javante Perkins, the lone Billiken, to yet get on the scoreboard. Seen that on both ends, a three-pointer off of an offensive rebound. Interest, interesting shot selection when you think they could have wound down the time there, Scotty. No, you're exactly right. But when you get an open look for your best shooter, don't mind taking that either. Perkins time winding down, and that'll do it. As the Billikens and Broncos will head to their respective locker rooms in St. Louis. To start out offensively, ice cold, head in the locker room at the half with a lead at 26 to 23. Coach Ford's team trying to pick up their eighth win of the season. Right now, Coach Ford is with Scott Heimer. Scotty? Well, Coach, you knew this was going to be a grind. What were your impressions the first 20 minutes? We didn't rebound the ball very well, and we threw some crazy passes at times. Uh, obviously, got off to a slow start offensively, but both teams did. But it's kind of how I thought it'd be played, grind it out. What do you have to do offensively to get on track a little bit? Uh, got to get a little bit better spacing. Everybody's on top of each other, so we got to get the court spread out a little bit. Um, right now, when Yuri's driving, everybody's standing. We got to move and cut when he drives. Okay, coach. Thank you, Scotty. 
Scott and coach thanks so much the coach Ford's team heads to the locker room with the three point lead at 26 23 against the Boise State Broncos stay with us our halftime show from Chaffetz is heading away next. Well, it's the teddy bear toss tonight. Now, initially, when we were wrapping up the interview with Coach Tillett, I just saw that on the corner of my eye, and I thought, well, maybe Scott had made somebody mad. Because I saw you talking to somebody, these bears are coming at you. No, it's one of the best promotions of the year, the teddy bear toss. This is beautiful. It's Christmas time. Absolutely. All right, so the Billikens with the three-point lead, and needless to say, for both teams, it has been a struggle offensively. Well, we knew it would be a grind. Travis Ford knew it was going to be a grind. This is a team in Boise State that holds opponents to 58 points per game, and it certainly has not been easy. It was a struggle, certainly the first 10 minutes of the game for the Billikens. Even when they got open looks, they could knock them down, but there were just not a lot of open looks until they started getting a little bit more downhill to the free throw line. The boys were very active with their hands. Uh, fortunately for the Billikens, they did a nice job on the defensive end, but Again, Boise, you can see why they're favored as one of the favorites in the Mountain West. They're very experienced, they're poised, they're very physical. I thought Francis Okoro had, had some really good on the offense. Got some open threes. Terrence Hargrove, great energy and momentum for the Billikens on both ends. Blocking shots, knocking down threes. I thought he was terrific in the first half. All right, so there you see the stats through the first 20 minutes of play here in Chaffetz. And we mentioned this, the bench points, 12 bench points out of your 26 points for Travis Ford's team. It's really the difference in the paint and the, the fact that the Billikens started to get downhill, play north-south, get points in the paint, get to the free throw line a little bit. That's probably the difference in the game. But I, I, I expect this is going to be one of those games that's probably played in the 50s or 60s. First to 50 might win. It might. <laughs> Second half is coming up here on Valley Sports Media. St. Nick. Second half of Billikens and Broncos coming up on Valley Sports. At home as we get set for the second half. Billikens taking on Boise State, and they have the three-point lead. There you see the 26 points. Well, and that's the fewest first-half points that the Bills have had. Their previous low, 27 in their loss against Maryland. You can say that, okay, offensively, things weren't going so well. But if you want to take it from a positive aspect, Scotty, you and I talked about it. The Bills' defense has matched up with this Boise State stifling. Yeah, it, it, it had to because you knew it was going to be a struggle on the other end. But their defense has been fantastic. Help Boise State 29% uh, shooting as a team. Now, offensively, Travis Ford told us at the half, he's like, we can't just stand and watch Yuri dribble the basketball. And I did see a lot of standing around. So I'm sure they talked about that at the half. Can't be stagnant. When he drives, you, people have to move. They've got to get right spacing. See if they can find some rhythm. Only two assists for Yuri. In fact, the first one came at the 508 mark remaining in the first half. Yeah, you don't see that very often. And again, boys, he's doing a nice job helping when Yuri gets by the initial defender. Abo. He's a good-looking player. He is. With 24 points against Loyola. Good, long wing. Shoot it. Double-double against uh, a and in their victory for Boise State. As we mentioned, transfer from Texas Tech and part of that Sweet 16 team a couple of years ago. Perkins. Coral with another offensive rebound. Yuri spots up. Hits the three. Well, could that be big? He was three for 16 from three-point line before that shot. If he could knock that down, Scott, good luck trying to mm. guard him. Vick is doing a great job of denying Dagenhart on the cut to the glass. See the miss that time again. Another three-pointer off of offensive rebound by Okoro. And I love the fact that Yuri just stepped in with confidence and shot it. Smith lost the handle. Billiken basketball. Nine turnovers from both teams in the opening 20 minutes. Yep. And Fred Thatch in pretty quickly for Javante Perkins. Perkins had two 
good looks to start the second half, but wasn't able to knock him down. Only scored, only played four minutes in that first half, and Travis Ford going to the bench quickly. Offensive foul. Mm. That is going to be on Alcoro, and that is number three. Mm. Let's see if Travis Ford goes to Jake Forrester. Talking over with Corey Tate, and he's going to bring in Jake as Francis will unfortunately take a seat on the Billiken bench at the 18-28 mark of this second half with yeah. those three fouls. Yeah, they're not real deep at that position. It's really just the two of them. Mohamedou Cisse, young, true freshman, not playing a lot of minutes. So important that Forrester doesn't get in foul trouble as well. Jimerson. Thatch comes away with the miss. Gibson will try it again. Forrester with the offensive board and the foul on Dagenhartz. I like the effort though, Scott. I like the fact that they're pushing the ball in transition. I like the fact that Jimerson's coming out firing. Those are fine shots for him, even though it looks a little bit quick. He's not going to get a lot of space. He doesn't need a lot of space. But if he gets any type of open look, he needs to let it go. Quiet. Trying to post thatch. Megan Hart. Tough matchup right there. And he'll get the roll. That is a tough matchup, especially with the size disadvantage for Fred right there. Fred's giving him about four or five inches. Megan Hart just gets good post position and you can see why he was the freshman of the year in the Mountain West. Oh, definitely. Forrester this time gets it to drop inside. Well, he's wide open inside yes. the last couple of possessions. Yep. Did a good job moving to space. When you're he's dribbling, just move to space. This time on Pickett. And Dagenhardt starting to find his game here in the opening minutes of the second half. Yeah, he's too good. You're not going to hold this guy down for 40 minutes. Collins going right to the hole, a little strong. Thatch right there for the Billikens. Shot clock winding down to single digits. Yuri again will head back to the line, and that's as the struggles went for the Billikens offensively in that first half. That's exactly what Yuri did. Started creating offense by going to the line. Yep, yep, and getting kind of putting his head down, going north south, jumping into contact, putting some pressure on the officials to make that call. Now five for seven from the free throw line, and that's something that you'd like to see guys like Gibson Jimerson get more to the line. He's only got nine free throw attempts on the season, does Gibson Jimerson, so can't fall into just being the perimeter shooter. It is amazing, a lot of those three-point shooters, somehow, someway, they don't get to the line as yeah. much as you'd like to see them. Yeah, because you settle. You end up settling because you think that's your role, but but Gibson, Gibson last year led the Billikens in free throw attempts as Pickett fouls the three point shooter. <laughs> Travis Ford. <laughs> Can barely stand himself. 16 minutes left in our second half. Bills with a four point lead. In our 
entire Valley Sports Midwest crew. Scott Warman with you. Great to have you alongside. Billiken basketball tonight here at Chaffetz. And Billiken fans, join us here on December 21st for the Schnooks Rewards Night at Chaffetz Arena. Everyone who shows their Schnooks Reward app at Gate B will receive free admission. Reward yourself and download the Schnooks Rewards app today. So Travis Ford's team has Francis Okoro on the bench now with three fouls as he picked up that foul early in this second half. And we've seen his replacement, Jake Forrester, coming off the bench, the team to transfer from Temple, getting some opportunities inside. One of two so far with those opportunities. We'll see if that continues yeah. here. Yeah, and Forrester again has, has a good touch around the rim, good feel, fifth year senior, knows how to play the game. Different player than Okoro, but certainly can be effective on both ends. Abo is a 90% free throw shooter as he'll be shooting three attempts here as he's fouled on his three-point attempt right at the whistle. You know, we talk about all the experience in college basketball. Boise State, Shaver's a fifth-year senior. Max Rice is a fifth-year senior. Smith is a fifth-year senior. Three of their five starters. So just playing with a lot of experience. He's talking to Coach Leon Rice before the game. He thinks the Mountain West could get four teams yeah. in the NCAA tournament. That's how good the, the league you, is. Let me tell you what. I, I think the Mountain West is one of the conferences that for whatever reason, maybe because they're on the West Coast, yeah. is always under the radar. That is a terrific basketball. Yeah, it's not, kind of not considered a power five, but you got UNLV, New Mexico, Nevada. Missed the easy one around the basket. Really good league. San Diego State, just hard places to go win. some help. Whiting trying to bail him out. Offensive rebound and the rebound goes to the Billikens. Well, you talk about long offensive possessions. We've seen a lot of them here tonight. Scott. This is the prettiest basketball I've ever seen <laughs> yeah, watching the Golden State Warriors play the uh, Dallas Mavericks Army. Not so much. Like there's a lid on that basket. Opens. Abo. Smith. And the rebound goes to Yuri. Good pass. Oh, and the block. But the foul is called. It's going to be three from Abba. Again, just a little, uh, little pick and roll. Right on time. Good delivery. Jake and an into tonight. 81% from the free throw line. Started his career at Indiana. He went to Temple and now on his third school to finish up his college career. Folks, the Joint Chiropractic is the official chiropractor of Billiken Athletics. You're back, baby. Yes, it's been quite the travel for Jake in his collegiate career. And I think we're going to see a lot more. I was say, you see, <laughs> that is not unique. This will be the norm. Yep. <laughs> Still got guys that are using their extra COVID years. You got the transfer portal. Coaches changing schools. It's hard to predict who's going to be good anymore in college basketball because the rosters changed so much. I think it was difficult to try to keep track of free agents in Major League Baseball. <laughs> There's nothing compared to college athletics now. Oh, what a shot there by Shaver. You, know, you don't want to let him get started. He's been quiet all night and. He can get hot in a hurry, averaging 15 and a half a game. Tied at 35 on that bucket by Shaver. He just has four points on the night. Maybe 
call him Big Bucket is his nickname and watch him just work a little bit against Hargrove and that's just good offense. Step back from 19, yeah, no problem. He used to do that back in the day, didn't you, Scotty? <laughs> I probably would have fallen over <laughs> if I tried that. Didn't have good enough balance. Bills without a field goal for the last three plus minutes. Yeah, this is, they kind of do the pro style with the big fella. And Hargrove again, strong on the defensive end. Yuri trying to take it to the basket. Forster with the offensive rebound. Hargrove. This crowd is just yearning they for are. a shot to go down for the both games. They're just ready to explode. Well, we said before the game, if this is a game in the, in the 50s, it certainly favors Boise State. Wilkins average almost 80 a game. They want to get out and go a little bit, and Boise wants to play a little bit more methodical as we're seeing. Foul on Fred there. That is already four team fouls. In fact, both teams got four team fouls at the 12-44 mark of this second half. The thing that Boise State doesn't doesn't do a lot of is turn the ball over. They only average 11 turnovers, and so you talked in the first half, Scott, about getting points off turnovers. But if they don't turn the ball over much, and because of their experience, it's hard to get those points and get the easy ones. Shaver, by the way, as, as Scott and I had mentioned, over seven and a half rebounds this season as he gives the Broncos their first lead since the 7-18 mark of the second half. Those seven and a half rebounds per game, only player in the country under 6-5 that has over seven and a half rebounds. I read that stat, you know I thought of, don't you? Gordon Goodwin. Well, yeah, him. I went a little deeper back in the day. I went a little Dobbs. You went Donnie Dobbs. <laughs> yeah, no, that's right. He He's was only about fierce. Six, yeah. Speaking of fierce, just lost Max him. Rice with yeah. the three there, man. Just lost him. Just lost Max Rice. Collins, beautiful. Can't get it to fall. And here comes Dagenhart in transition. And just like that, it's a six point lead, and Travis calls the timeouts. Nine, nothing run for the Broncos. They take the lead over the Bills here in downtown St. Louis. Run and they regain the lead at 41 to 35. Folks, the annual Billiken Baseball First Pitch Dinner will be held February 3rd at Olive and Oak Restaurant and will feature Valley Sports Midwest analyst and former Cardinal Brad Thompson. Come for a night of fun talking Cardinals and Billiken's baseball. Contact the Slew Baseball Office or you can call head coach Dan Hendrickson at 314 977 3172 for more information. Again, that is on February 3rd at Olive and Oak Restaurant in Webster Groves. So Travis Ford calling that timeout as his team has been held scoreless for the last two and a half minutes. Yeah, he knows this is dangerous territory. A six point lead in a game like this feels like a lot bigger lead. And you see a 9 0 run. Leon Rice got to be very happy with this team applying some pressure out of that timeout. Almost gets a turnover. Thatch and Shaver doing battle. Fred's got it, but he's got to hustle. Billiken's only two for 14 from the field here in the second half. Scott, a lot of those are they're, they're, they're contested layups, but they're but they're layups. They're they're, they're point blank shots they're, at the rim. They're high percentage shots. Yeah, you got to you got to them. Tough, toughen up and make those. Collins with the shot clock winding down, rolls out, rebound taken by Rice. Silla. 
Well, you see Okoro back in with those three fouls. Batch, kick out, three, Parker, no. Rice back the other way. I don't think Dad probably particularly cared for that shot. <laughs> Max's father is the head coach, by the way, well, he's got of Boise two, State. Well, he's got two sons playing on the team, he does Leon Rice. Slew one for the last 13 from the field. We're looking at basketball when we come back as they trail it against Boise State. Midway through our second half of Billiken basketball, Palm Valley Sports Midwest. All right, we take a look at the Bills' upcoming schedule. It is brought to you by Royal Banks of Missouri. Got a week off, got some finals coming up, and then two more on this uh, three straight at home, the Drake Bulldogs from the Missouri Valley Conference coming up next Saturday. And then SIU Edwardsville will be here on the 21st at SIUE is playing some really good basketball yep, right yep. now, Scott. Yep, they really are, and Drake one of the, picks to be one of the better teams in the Missouri Valley. Then you start A-10 Conference on the road at St. Joseph's and at UMass, and guess who's the coach at UMass? Frank Martin. Mm -hmm. People remember Frank Martin at K-State, and they're playing great basketball, so it's gonna be a tough stretch. So good. Saw Rhode Island in that Cayman Islands yep. tournament back yes, on did. Thanksgiving week. And Archie Miller. Archie Miller. Of course, we all know the success he's had at Dayton. So many good coaches in this it league. It is, isn't it? Crazy. Matt McCullough following his father at Davidson. Chris Mooney still at Richmond. Anthony Grant at Dayton. I mean, there's just a lot of really great experience and still young up and coming coaches. Jimerson. Back of the iron, there's Okoro with another offensive rebound. Yuri. And that last touch by Francis. So I think what teams are doing when Yuri penetrates, they're just not leaving the shooters, and they're making Yuri finish. And he's really not used to that, and he's kind of a reluctant scorer. And so when he drives, Travis Ford talked about it. Everybody else has to move into position because they're just not going to leave the shooters on the wings. So they're turning the corner on Collins, and Yuri will pick up his second foul. and it ties the largest lead of the night for the Broncos at 42-35. Bills, well, it's been a struggle. They have not scored in the last four-plus minutes. Oh, for their last 11. Yuri there, breaks the ice. A much-needed yep. basket to state the obvious. Yep. If in doubt, go to number one. They're going to make him finish at the rim, but he's capable of doing that. Look at that defense against Shaver. People forget, as much as people talk about Yuri Collins and his assists, he's been a two-time all-first-team defensive player in the A-10. I mean, the guy really doesn't get enough credit for his defensive work. Right, great defense on the other side. Terrence Hargrove yeah. has had an outstanding game off the bench for Coach Ford. Now for three. And there's an offensive rebound this time by Hargrove. See if he can get Jimerson involved here. Coro inside, too strong. By the way, Francis with six offensive rebounds here tonight.
Erickson's going to get him with the elbow. And reminder, Abo's out there with three fouls from Boise State. Yeah, the yeah, Rice did a nice job. They just cleared aside, let Abo go one on one against Gibson Jimerson. That was kind of an NBA play by Leon Rice, who's such a veteran, his 13th year. He's got 250 wins. And Boise was a longtime assistant to Mark Few at Gonzaga for 11 years. Well, we talked a lot at the top of the show as the timeout is called, Scott, that this is a stifling defense for Boise State that they bring to the Gateway City here tonight. And you look at some of the numbers, we brought this up during the open of the show. I mean, it, we knew that this was yeah. going to be a struggle for St. Louis offensively. Here yeah, tonight. we talked to the coaching staff and they said, this is not going to be pretty. We're just telling you up front. And it was it's exactly the way they thought that this game was go, would go. And, Talking to Leon Rice before the game, he said it was actually an adjustment for me coming from Gonzaga to Boise. He said, because Gonzaga, we just played loose and free and everybody could score and we get all these NBA guys. He goes, at Boise, we have to play a little bit differently to win. He goes, I just have to figure out what's our identity. And our identity is really guarding on the defense then, taking care of the basketball. We've got some skill players, but we can't play the way we played it at Gonzaga. So it's just interesting how he's adapted and recruited to his program. Zach's a totally different animal. They bring in some of these kids that are so long can play the inside yeah. outside game. Yeah, Chet Holmgren, six, seven foot one, Kevin Durant look likes. I mean, it's just incredible. It really is. Oh, wow. Out of the break, hits the three. Thirteen on the night from the transfer from Texas Tech. Okay, well, who else is going to help Yuri? Who's going to step up alongside Yuri? to provide some offensive punch. And Travis Ford keeps trying to figure out who that secondary scorer is going to be tonight. Last touch by Rice, eight remaining on the shot clock. Well, and you'd like it to be that guy right there, 24, Gibson Jimerson. And, and they, are, they are literally face guarding him with Max Rice, trying to find a way to get to the free throw line. Gibson with just four points tonight. Yeah, he's got to find something other than just catch and shoot. Batch open for the three, and he hits it. Crowd was waiting for one to drop finally. Yep, searching for answers, and maybe that'll pick up the defensive end, find some rhythm offensively, but they can't trade baskets with Boise. It's another one Goodness. against Thatch. Goodness. You don't see many guys rise up on Fred Thatch and just knock it right in their eye. Here he again on the drive. We're going to call that offensive. That is three fouls now on Yuri Collins. Block, charge call, but what we're going to see from Boise State is their rotation. Watch the rotation as Yuri Collins comes over, Dagan Hart comes over and we stop it right here. Look where his feet are right here in this restricted arc. He is outside the restricted arc which is where you have to be, Scott, in order to get the charge. Nice job on rotating over, being outside the arc, being square to Yuri Collins. Collins picks up his third personal with 7.27 to go. And you saw right at the end of the play, Yuri was trying to sell that he was in the restricted area, but he wasn't. <laughs> Great defense by Dagenhart. Billikens, it has been a struggle offensively in this second half, only shooting 18% from the field. And during the break, you, or the other break, you and I were just talking about, but Bills with 12 turnovers and nine assists. That's unheard of of a Travis Ford team. Yeah, they're averaging 17 assists and only 11 turnovers on the season. Travis Ford trying every combination, trying some full court pressure, bringing Fred Thatch in, bringing Sincere Parker, Hargrove, somebody to give them a spark. I haven't seen much of Javante Perkins here in the second half. Abo, who's been red hot. Batch. Yuri wants to push it. Gonna take it right to the hole. Bills want 
a stop. Dagenhardt on Hargrove. Abo. And it will be Broncos basketball. Quite a battle for that rebound. Well, Yuri Collins just putting this Billiken team on his back. A little secondary one man fast break all the way to the hole. Travis Ford, one of the fouls, well. Yeah, this, this is a battle on both ends. Physical officials are really letting it go, too. Yuri with 15 on the Knights. There's a kick. The second highest score for the Billikens is Forrester off the bench with six. Yeah, and that's not a good sign for the Billikens. You don't want Yuri Collins being your leading scorer. You'd rather have that game where he's 8 to 10 with 10, 12 assists. And now a steal. And the finish. And the lead is down to three for the Broncos at 47 44. And the crowd is on their feet here in Sheamus. Somewhere somebody heard a whistle. <laughs> <laughs> it was loud. I didn't. <laughs> it was loud in here. I think, I think Degenhardt's going to get pick up one. Watch Yuri getting out in the passing lane, doing a little bit of everything. I mean, that guy got some pride. That guy's got some pride in his game on both ends. Talk about a leader. Jace Whiting, number 15 for Boise. They are literally face guarding Yuri. Jimerson, oh, just missed. A coral trying to get the save. He does, but right into the hands of Whiting. Seven offensive rebounds for Francis tonight. Ooh, man. Yuri just picked up his fourth foul. And Travis Ford is not happy at all. Mm. That's a big call. And I, we're going to take a look at it, but it looked like pretty good defense. Yuri's right there. Rice is right with him. I mean, that looks like he had his hand up right on the ball. And he's in good position, legal guarding position. Just puts his hand out. The interesting decision that Travis Ford has with 519 to go with Yuri with four. You're going to leave him in. We'll let him go. And looks like Javon is going to come in for Yuri, but for how long? I mean, I would expect 90 seconds, maybe. I mean, not a long stretch. Probably you can get to the under four timeout. Yeah, maybe you get to the timeout and put it back in. Rice is a 90% free throw shooter. Offense has been coming through Yuri, so with him not in the game, where are you going to find offense? Can you get something from a Coro down low? Can you get a, an open look for Jimerson? Or a picket. Or a picket. Fred driving the baseline, gets the bucket and the foul. Huge bucket for Fred Dax Jr. Well, he is a slasher and an elite athlete, and he just says, I'm going to go up over and through you and finish it. The young man from Sykeston with the AM1. We've heard the term over the years, even when we were kids way back in the day, the glue guy. Yep. No, he really is. He's a wonderful leader. He's already got two degrees working on his third degree, and this crowd is fired up, Scott Roman. Quiets him down. Boy, this young man is having a night on the road. Oh, what an answer. Hand in the face. 18 points. Our 
Hargrove going in the paint, tried to get the foul, none called. See if the Bills can cut into this five point deficit as we touch on four minutes left. Here with the second half. Jamerson. No, he can't find it. Akuro with another offensive rebound. When we come back, Francis will head to the free throw line. Bills trail it by five. Billikens trying to get a comeback in the final four as they trail it by five. Folks, the telecast of this game is authorized by the Atlantic 10 Conference. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of the game, image, sound, account, or description of the game without the express written consent of the Atlantic 10 Conference is strictly prohibited. So Okoro will head to the line with 357 remaining. And again, Yuri Collins will be back out on the floor for the Billikens with those four fouls. Yeah, not no surprise after the under four timeout, he's back in the game. And he's going to have to be careful playing with those four. Perot coming off a 14 rebound performance in the loss against Iona on Tuesday. Back in double figures with 10 rebounds tonight, seven of them cleaning up the offensive glass. Yeah, his best offense is just going to the offensive glass. He's been terrific. To see him be able to finish a little bit more down low, but I'm going to say he's been a decent free throw shooter his career, over 70% as a Billiken. So it's Collins, Jimerson. Pickett and Coro and Thatch on the floor after the other four timeout. If, if I'm Shaver, I'm going right at Yuri Collins. I'm trying to find a mismatch with Yuri Collins if I'm Boise State. Abo. And the foul on Dagan Hartz. That's three on Tyson. Well, Coro is an elite rebounder. What he, what he can do is rebound outside of his zone. Gets off the floor quick, aggressive. Eighty-one percent from the line heading into tonight's contest. I know Abo's been hot, but if I'm if I'm Boise, I'm trying to get. Yuri isolated. Make it in guard. This is a good matchup for the Billikens, though, with Thatch on Abo. Hagenhart from outside. Boise State suddenly has gone cold from the field. Billikens have got to get some buckets. Thatch from the outside. In and out. Pickens on Shaver. Rice doesn't try to drive on Yuri. Dagan Hart with the left hand. Offensive rebound taken. Shaver for three. And a call to Collins. Yuri. Pickett. No. Rebound. Javon with the stick back. Billikens down by two, 52-50, two minutes remaining. Dagan aren't going to try to use that size against Thatch. Thatch 
comes away with it. Collins. Oh, and they lost the handle, and Rice is right there for the Broncos. Right. You still don't need to foul. You just be solid defensively. Plenty of time. One possession game. Leon Rice going to call timeout. Boise State earns another timeout. They have one remaining, two remaining for St. Louis. Leon Rice wanted to, Yuri Collins to get his fifth <laughs> personal right there. Yuri kind of went for the ball right as they were going to call a timeout. All right, let's take a look at tonight's player of the game. It is presented by Chuck's Hot Chicken. Well, Yuri Collins has done it all. I mean, 17 points, hasn't shot it great, but he's kind of kept the Billikens in this game. As usual, four assists, four rebounds, tremendous on the defensive end. He's certainly been the player of the game for the Billikens. Nashville Hot Chicken, fresh and fast. Order online for pickup and delivery at Chuck's Hot Chicken. All right, so Coach Rice calls the timeout. He's got 20 seconds on the shot clock, 121 remaining. They really haven't given it, uh, given it to Schaefer yeah. yet with Yuri marking him up. I would think that that's who you're going to try to get the ball to, right? I totally agree. I think that's your better matchup because Thatch has done such a good job on Dagenhardt down on the post, so I don't think that's going to work as well as they might have liked. But Shaver on Yuri Collins to pick up that fifth, create some space, put some pressure on the officials. I would expect them to spread the floor. Again, Abo's been super hot, but I would try to get the ball on Shaver. He's the one that's going to create the shot if you're Boise State. On the other end, the Billikens got to be solid defensively, make sure they get that defensive rebound, and then they've had success when they've gotten downhill. Don't settle for the first quick perimeter jump shot. Get downhill, try to get to the free throw line or something at the rim. So you got Thatch on Abo, and you got Pickett on Dagenhart. Boise State has been held scoreless for the last three and a half minutes. Can it continue? Burrow with the block. Yuri. Pick it. And a blocking foul is called. And Javon will head to the line with 58.3 remaining. You know what I like about that decision, though? Pickett could have shot a, a three, but I love the fact that he took it downhill, got to the rim, get to the free throw line. He didn't settle, got to the rim. Leon Rice is saying that's the same call that we got called for a charge on the other end. Pickett a 77% free throw shooter, and these are his first three free throws of the evening. Then we were tied was at 35 35. Rice leaning in and the foul is called on Jimerson. Boise State is trying to find matchups that they can exploit, and they like that matchup of Rice on Jimerson. Not a ton of contact there, but Rice crafty enough to get just enough contact to draw the attention of the officials. And as you mentioned, Rice 90%. It's automatic from there. Yeah. All right, so the Billikens call a timeout. Now, Scotty, no matter what happens here, you've got the 15-second yeah. differential shot clock and game clock. Do you want to try to go for an early shot before you give them the last shot? Maybe go five, ten seconds, try to get something early, or do you want to wind it down and maybe get a second chance? In the NBA, you might go quicker. Um, in, in college, assuming he makes this free throw, you've got a tie game. I think you're trying to look for your best available shot. I don't think you want to rush things. I think you want to run your stuff, 
Probably gonna have a first option, a second option, but you get your first best available shot, no matter where it is in the shot clock, assuming you're tied. Billikens with 18 field goals tonight, as Boise has held four teams so far this year to 20, or less than 20 field yeah. and, and expect your Collins to have the ball in his hands and, and to run like a high ball screen, get him in space, let him be the decision maker if you're the Billikens. Everybody else has to space out, but they also have to move. You can't just stand while Yuri's dribbling. By the way, Jimerson picking up his third foul, so he and Okoro are on the floor with three, and again, Yuri with four. Collins on the drive, and it's picked up by Rice. There he wanted a foul call, didn't get it, and Thatch quickly gets the foul to stop the clock with 26.3 remaining. I couldn't really see. We're going to take a look at this, see if there's any, uh, much contact here. Looked like Yuri might have got, yeah, there's definitely some contact there. Isilla, no, no call. You kind of expect the, the best player on the team to get that call late in the game, but they let him play on. And, Boise State has an opportunity to go up two possessions if he can make both of these. All right, so it's a one possession game no matter what. The Lickens do have one timeout remaining. Scott, I like the idea of get something quick. If you're wide open three, go ahead and take it, but or you can get something quick at the rim and then set your defense up again. You don't have to have a three, but if you get one, go ahead and take one, but you can take quick two. Yuri for the tie. Rebound taken by Shaver and the foul stops the clock with 10.8 seconds left. The Billikens four for 17 from beyond the arc here tonight and none Zero made by Gibson Jimerson. Yeah, see those percentages aren't, aren't great. You have Yuri Collins, not a great three-point shooter. You, you've got plenty of time. Get a quick two, set up your defense, extend the game, live to fight another day. Now they have an opportunity to make it a two-possession game. Folks, we'll be back here next Saturday for our next telecast of Billiken basketball in Valley Sports Midwest as the hopes the Drake Bulldogs. And our coverage gets underway at 7 Central right here on Valley Sports Midwest. That's the big one. Missed them both. Got a chance. Pick it. Thatch for the tie. No. Rebound for Rice. And that's going to do it. The Broncos in their first true road game of the 2022-23 season are going to come away with a win against the Bills here at Chaffetz. I mean, you can't ask for a better shot. A little, little pump fake gets a really good look. Both eyes on the rim, just can't knock it down. But that's been the story of the Billikens all night long, Scott. Just even open looks haven't been able to convert those opportunities. So for Travis Ford's team, they will now go to seven and four on the season, and the Broncos come away with the road win and are now eight and two with the victory at 57-52. Well, disappointing loss for the Billikens, a game that was certainly winnable. They fought back, tied the game, had an opportunity to win at the game. They just couldn't make enough plays down the stretch on the offensive end. I thought they were you got to give Boise a lot of credit. They go on the road. They were tough as advertised on both ends of the floor, and they made plays at the end. Congratulations to Boise State, but the Bills has got to regroup. It's finals week. Come back next Saturday against a very tough Drake team. So the Bills fall to the Broncos by a final of 57-52 in tonight's broadcast. 
has been a presentation of Valley Sports Midwest in association with the Atlantic 10 Conference. Again, our next telecast comes your way next Saturday as the Billikens will be at Chaffetz taking on the Drake Bulldogs. Our coverage gets underway at 7 p.m. Again, Broncos over the Bills, 57-52. For Scott Highmark and our entire Valley Sports Midwest crew, I'm Scott Warman. So long from Chaffetz Arena as the Bills fall by five tonight in Midtown St. Louis.